This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Today's episode of the Doc and Jock Wrestling Podcast is brought to you by The Athletic, premium coverage for passionate Detroit sports fans. Detroit sports podcast listeners can get 20% off the first year of an annual subscription by visiting theathletic.com slash DSP. That's theathletic.com slash DSP to save 20% off the first year of an annual subscription. Welcome to episode 13 of the Doc and Jock Wrestling Show. Not quite Chris Jericho's pot of thunder, but you know what? We're the pot of lightning. So deal with it. On today's show, we're going to talk about some devastating news for Paige. We're going to recount Raw. We're going to recount SmackDown, at least the highlights that we enjoyed. We also have some news and notes. Of course, we'll give you the verdict on which uh, show was better between Raw and SmackDown. But as always, the dude who comes with the high-flying elbow from the top rope, he is the Doc, John Macron. What's going on, John? Always look forward to talking wrestling. This week was amazing between Raw and SmackDown. Close competition. I really enjoyed the ending of SmackDown. Lots to chomp on. I mean... Did you I, really think it was amazing? I did. I liked SmackDown a lot because I felt like I the way they... was amazing. Though. I thought it was like the twist and turns in terms of uh, having a championship match that night instead of the traditional week before. I thought it made it very interesting. And then the guy I wanted to win obviously won, and I thought it was really cool. So I was cool with SmackDown. Really? I I was vibing were, it. Well, we'll discuss it when we yeah. get to SmackDown. But a lot of bad news this week as yeah. well. It's really interesting and to I see that. I think that's where I want to start. Mm-hmm. I, want, I want to kick the show off with, uh, with Paige. She was injured a few weeks ago at a house show uh, when Sasha Banks kicked her in, in the back, basically in the solar plexus. And uh, the moment she got kicked, she was totally disorientated. She was pretty much out of it. You could see her trying to regain feeling in her hands and in her limbs and in her extremities. And she hasn't been cleared to wrestle since this took place. That's why she's been held off of wrestling on Raw for the last couple weeks now. How surprised were you to see her actually show up at Raw? I wasn't. I wasn't surprised because she was uh, backstage the the other day, or she was backstage what two weeks ago, uh, right after the the event took place, right after the injury happened. I, I'm more surprised that it, it's come out now that WWE won't clear her to wrestle again, and. She's 25. She's basically been wrestling since she was 12, and her whole family does it. Everybody does it. She had a doctor tell her, and she came out on Lillian Garcia's uh, a wrest- uh, wrestling podcast and, and said, my doctor won't clear me, but I want to wrestle. I'm going to wrestle. Whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. There will be a shot that I can take to where it will numb the pain, and I'm just going to do it. She has that prize fighter mentality. I like that, but at the same point, you got to do what's best for you. And her getting back in the ring was probably not a smart idea. What what blows my mind even more was WWE did not want her to have surgery on her neck. Now, she's got uh she has a bad spine. She's got scoliosis and it she she's come out and she said that it basically looks like an upside down question mark. That's how curved her spine is. So, she wanted to have surgery. WWE said you don't need surgery. WWE's doctor said you don't need surgery. That's what led to them having a huge rift and why she was held off TV for over a year. Now you mix in uh, two wellness policy violations for uh, what is believed to be Adderall. Um, You mix in some sex tape scandals that happened. It was a very tumultuous year for her last year. She comes back. She's greeted with a, a rousing ovation by the crowd. The crowd was so excited when she came back and she brought absolution with her. And now her very, very short run has been cut way too short and she's, basically done it just goes to show you when you mess around with the neck it's a physical sport you got to take bumps it's a sport where you're basically bumping if you just watch and count basically 50 to 60 times per match and you got to do that every single day with one day off basically these people are working 300 days a year flying around they're not just uh you know playing tiddlywinks and playing marbles in the back they're sacrificing their body and that's why i think the fans revere these athletes when they retire and they build a connection because these individuals are giving up their bodies their livelihood their long-term health for the sake of our entertainment so that schlubs like us can record a podcast and talk about them so you give Paige credit but i think it's in her best interest to stay retired and to take advantage of the wwe machine because many have continued to work for 
WWE in light of injuries. You got Daniel Bryan, one of the most noted people that had an injury was Edge. And he's doing work with Christian, doing stuff behind the scenes, creating content. So you have now a platform. The WWE is is a billion-dollar company. And so when you have that platform... You also can extend your livelihood and be part of the of the wrestling organization by doing stuff behind the scenes. And if your in ring stuff is done, then at the same time, you got to take time to mourn it, like Daniel Bryan did. You got to take time to get away from it, and then rededicate yourself to find something else. Whether there's a a plethora of things she can do. I mean, she can continue to be the manager of Absolution. She can be uh, an on air talent. She can be an announcer. She can be a creative person in the background. Look, you got this women's revolution. Maybe she can become and work her way up to by various means. She can work her way up to becoming a uh, somebody who is higher up in the writing department. You know, by by legit means or by illegitimate means. You never know what path she's going to take to get successful. I mean, she has some skills that uh, I find very valuable. <laughs> but but you know what? In terms of what her opportunities are, I think that she has an opportunity to do whatever she wants in her life because of the fact that she's been wrestling since she's been like 15 years old. So she's got a vast amount of knowledge she can pass on to the women's revolution. I think that she's going to play a part, and uh, she just got to get over the fact as, as fast as possible. You got to be like, okay, take a week, take two weeks. You got to get moving and keep the train going because the WWE train stops for nobody. In the end, she was just a small little piece in the cog, and she's got to continue that going by helping maybe the next generation. They just keep going. Look, the next person up. I think you're maybe underselling what she has meant to the the, the legitimacy of, of women's wrestling on WWE. She, she's no a major long, figure. Yeah, no longer are our women just there to to come out and, and get naked. You know, do the whole kiss Mister McMahon's ass. No, no more of this. They're, they're, but I'm also weighing in some indiscretions and disrespect that she probably has shown a little bit. Well, too. I, and I and I get to the organization, and I, and I totally understand all of that. But she has been a huge reason that the women yes. are where they're at. She is a huge reason why the the women are going to have a Royal Rumble match. She she is a major player and a huge part in all of this. And you're right, she is she is a cog in the machine. But I think you're underselling her just a little bit. Um, I think she has a lot of potential. You know, Daniel Bryant, you brought him up. He's a guy who wants to come back and wrestle. He says, by any means necessary, once his contract's done, if WWE doesn't let him wrestle again, he's going to go somewhere else and wrestle, whether it's the death of him or not. Now, that may be foolish. It's his choice, his decision. I don't know if Paige is at that same level where she's like, I'm going to go do it no matter what. The bump that she took by Sasha Banks, and it's not Sasha's fault. You know, they discuss what they're going to do, and then they go out and they do it. It was an unnecessary bump. Didn't have to kick her there. Didn't have to be that spot. I think at some point, this was going to flare up. And at some point, whether it be sooner or later, Paige was going to be sidelined. And she was going to be forced into this just because the condition of her neck, her spine are that bad. Now, what do you do? How do you rebound from this? What can you do? She could become a a almost like a, a a commissioner for the women's if you wanted to have like a dual role where uh, if they're you know whether they be on Raw and SmackDown she travels to both shows and she's the commissioner for both women's I think that's a possibility she could be an announcer because she does she's a very she's very good at cutting a promo very good so do you maybe make her an announcer and have her be that talent that's uh that's not necessarily on screen but talking about what's going on on screen does she stay a manager for absolution I think that's a very real possibility do you think uh just real quickly off the cuff here that since they do the cruiserweights on raw and they have 205 live do you think the women maybe should branch off and continue to get their own showcase, maybe a two-hour show down the road where it's a women's only show, and maybe make her a part of that as well? Maybe down the line, if you want to continue the evolution, I know that it's important to be featured on these shows, but sometimes on these shows, they get looked at as an afterthought, and maybe if you get your own two-hour show, they got enough talent that they can have their own brand on small... Uh, they can have their own brands on Raw and SmackDown, but also have a, a two-hour women's show maybe on a Friday night. Yeah, as far as creating content, I, I think that's a way that they could go. And I think that's something that could be done. Um, Should they? I, 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 yeah, I, I think so. I mean, women's and, and, Royal Rumble, women's this, women's that. I mean, at this point, it's fair to say maybe if if you want to start out just to test it out, maybe a women's hour show, just all women's wrestling, yeah. uh, uh, talk about the angles and just to focus on the women. When, when we go to talk about what's going on with WWE and, and their contract, um, I think there might be a spot for it, not even on the network, on actual television that 
you, I, and everybody else have. So I, I think it's a good idea. We'll kind of touch on that a little bit later on in the show. But yeah, I think it, I think it's a very real possibility. And at that point, what she does is almost endless. She could be a manager. Yeah. She could be a commissioner. She could be uh, an announcer. I, I think it has a lot of there, there's there's a lot of possibility for her if she can get over her demons and to make sure that she doesn't yes. uh, drink herself or get into some nefarious things as well. So you hope that they can continue to utilize her properly. And uh, just because her in ring career is over doesn't mean she can't be an asset to WWE, and she should be. So let's get into Raw and SmackDown. What was your highlights? What did you like about Monday Night Raw this week? I'm going to be honest with you. There were there were two things that I liked, and that was pretty much it. The rest of it just seemed like filler. And the thing I liked was Braun Strowman. And this was a well, it was like an hour and a half long Braun Strowman segment that that ran and was woven through uh, all of Monday Night Raw. You know, he comes out, he, he's about to cut a promo, and, and I, I found it to be enjoyable when he was up there. He's like, let me tell you a short story. Uh, there was a monster, there was a, a machine, and then there was a beast, and in the end, the, the monster stood tall over both of them. I, I thought it was great, and he gets interrupted by Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle comes out and fires him, and then he goes on this rampage in the back, and he just destroys everything, and I, I found it to be... To be awe-inspiring at times, I found it to be hilarious at other times. Uh, I, I enjoyed him going back to catering after choke slamming Kurt Hawkins through a table and picking up a piece of cake and looking at the guy who was holding the platter because that guy was just frozen in fear, I, I, I guess, because everybody else scattered but Kurt Hawkins. Wasn't it awesome what Braun Strowman did to Michael Cole? That oh, was, it was oh, great. Awesome. It was great. He picks him up and he, and he tosses him into the, the, this crowd of security guards. I thought it was great. I didn't necessarily like the way that they kind of wrapped it all up. They they let him go on this tantrum, and he, and he throws this tantrum for an hour and a half, and Kurt Angle comes out, and he's like, look, Stephanie has uh, has reinstated you, and you're going you're gonna to be at the Royal Rumble. Well, what was the point of firing him in the first place? Like, he, he sat he sit there, and he almost kills Kane, and he almost kills Brock, and in the end, he's got no penalty to pay there. He then goes on a, on a tirade just annihilating everybody. He flips over a production truck in the back, which according to, to Kurt Angle, that costs $12 million. <laughs> and, um, there's, there's no retribution for that. So he's allowed to go ahead and do whatever he wants, apparently, which made no sense to me. At this point, he is so over. He is so over. It was awesome. I, I think WWE needs to pull the trigger and, and just go all in on him being a babyface. And have him win the title at the Royal Rumble. I agree 110%. One moment that I liked from Monday Night Raw, and to keep it on the theme of women, is they put over Sonya Deville. I yeah. felt like by having her defeat Sasha Banks clean right there, smack dab in the middle of the ring, many people were like, well, maybe the focus is going to be on Paige. Maybe the focus will be on Mandy Rose. But you go out there and you showcase this woman's talents in the ring, and the kicks were clean. It was her, a good match. It was a solid match. I was entertained by it. And you're like, oh, maybe they're elevating somebody here in this fashion. Now, at the expense of Sasha Banks, we've talked about it. I told Andrea, I'm like, well, maybe they're punishing her for kind of now uh, injuring uh, Paige and kind of her kind of sometimes lacks in-ring style and sometimes getting some people hurt. But I, I don't know if she's being punished, but it seems like her push is kind of diminished right now and she's putting some people over. But at the same time, I like Sonya Deville. Uh, her stock watch is, is kind of going up. Yeah, I, I like Absolution. I don't know how they're going to handle all this stuff that's going on with Paige. I, you're right. I thought it was a very, very good match. Should they have sacrificed somebody else? Maybe not Sasha? No, no. She was the right person? I, I think so, because you want to elevate. So how do you elevate a talent, right? Right. You don't, you don't want to sit there and just feed her some jobber. You know, and they've got this whole thing going on where, it, you know, it, it's Absolution versus Bailey, Sasha, and, and Mickey. So it had to be one of them, right? And I think Mickey has been fed to the slaughter enough. So how do you elevate her? You get the, the 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 prime time talent, and that is Sasha Banks. Out of those three guys, out of those three women, it's Sasha Banks. So I think it was abs- I think it was done perfect. One of the moments I did not like on Monday Night Raw was the way they utilized Elias. I mean, the dude has come off of fights with John Cena, Roman Reigns, where he stood toe to toe with them and kind of come across maybe as the winner, coming across with more momentum than most of those guys. And then on this episode, you have him string a guitar, sit there and sing a song to intro The Miz. And what? It wasn't even a good song. It wasn't even a good song. I'm like, why are you underutilizing this talent? This is a guy that you got to keep the ball rolling with. I feel like in this episode of Raw, 
you wasted an opportunity to continue to further a push that's needed for Elias. And I felt like that it was a wasted opportunity. And I just I go to myself, why? This guy can wrestle. This guy can talk. Yeah, the singing and the songs is, is a part of it. It's great. But at the same time, you go, hmm, you could be utilizing him a lot better than what they did. And the other part that I liked was I liked the way they utilized Nia Jax. I felt like she sold the injury perfectly. I felt like it also tied into her relationship with Enzo. So he, seeing her in the ring with Asuka, she played the part of the monster, and I'm liking the development of her character. She's right in the right spot now to take advantage. And if you get the ball, if the WWE commits to you and you get the ball, Nia Jax has to run with it. And the first opportunity I think she has uh, after coming back I think she did. She held herself well. I thought the way that they were able to to save face for both Nia mm-hmm. and for Asuka yep. was done well. Because yeah, going you have, to, I thought it was going to be double count out. You, you've got two monsters here who are, are butting heads, and I thought they both played off of each other very well. Neither one came out of this looking weak, yep. which is what you wanted. You want this to build so when you, when you get to, to the Royal Rumble, you have these two monsters who I'm assuming are going to be odds-on favorites to win it. And it's going to be interesting to see who ends up getting who ends up getting the win. Is it going to be Asuka? Is it going to be Nia Jack? How is this going to work out? What's going to happen? So there's some intrigue there. I like that. I thought it was I thought it was a decent job booking wise by by the Raw crew this week. But what it really felt like to me, it felt like you were bookend by a, a story with Braun that was interwoven for the first hour and a half, and then you had this thing going on with. Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan, and, and that basically bookend the the back end where you had Finn in, in the in the in the in the Battler Club taking on what I guess Seth Rollins and 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 Roman Reigns the two two thirds of what you could deem the New Shield. I don't want to deem it the New Shield, but that's kind of how they're how they're kind of portraying this to you. So I felt like it was a show that where it was bookended by two big two big events, and then everything else in the middle was just kind of there. And like uh, a lot of people say, when you have a strong opening segment, strong, you don't follow that up with the cruiserweights. You just kill the momentum of the show. Yeah. So again, something that you can look at as demerit is you got to put their angles in the right spot. And I don't think the cruiserweights need to come out after such a hot opening part of the show. I, I think the cruiserweights probably got to be in that 9.45 to 10 o'clock window. Yeah. Give people a little bit of break. You give them an hour and a half of action, uh, good storylines, women, uh, the dudes further along the promos. And then if you want to give people like a 20-minute break from like 9.45 to 10.05, that's cruiserweight time. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to— That's it. You don't, you don't want to <laughs> sit there and you don't want them to— there, There's a way, there's an ebb and a flow to the way your three-hour card should be laid out. And I don't think they do a very good job of that because— They'll put guys in a spot where they'll totally suck the entire momentum out of the arena, and then they'll put guys in a spot where it's just like hot, 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 and then you expect them to be hot, but they've just been burned out because it's been so hot. You got to give them a little bit of a of a cushion, give them something, you know, to to kind of come down off of so they can get hot again for your main event. And it just feels like a lot of times bra is just it, it's packaged poorly in the way it is div- delivered to you. It, it's done poorly. Um, something that wasn't poor was the Rollins and, and Balor match. I, I thought it was a very good yes, match. Solid, I thought solid. it was done well. Yes. Um, I, I, I think what you're setting up for here is you're going to have a heel turn with Finn and in the Balor Club. They're going to become your heel stable, and I'm all for it. I think it's going to be good. Finn as a heel is great, and Finn getting uh, the curb stomp, which is a move that has been outlawed by WWE, and for them to bring it back, I don't know if it's just for this match, just this one time, I'm not sure, but Finn had a huge welt on his forehead, Yeah, and he was not tended to by any medical staff. Yeah. The only guys who were in the ring with him were, were his Balor Club members, Gallows and Anderson, and he just looks completely disoriented. Like He legitimately looked disorientated, and he did a good job selling it if he wasn't, and for no medical staff to come in there and basically... Finn goes to the ring with a with a gigantic smile, and instantly, while he's in this match, it goes away. And it was a very good match. So I think you're going to start to see uh, a heel swerve with with both Finn and the Balor Club, and I think that's outstanding. Overall, Raw, decent. Now going over to SmackDown, we finally got what we wanted. Quick intro into the show, yeah. and then unfortunately, we got a match, but the match was terrible. I mean, oh, you, Jin- didn't, you didn't think it was a good ter- you didn't think it was a good match? Jinder Mahal, Xavier Woods, no, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was a typical oh, gender I, match, slow. And I totally much. disagree with you. I thought no. this was great. You liked it? I thought I, it was I slow, thought methodical. It was, I, thought I was, was into one, it. I thought it was one of the best matches of the night. Really? Yeah, I thought gender dominating Xavier... 
through the in, through the entire match was great. Xavier would 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 sit there and bubble up, and then he would just get smacked right back down. I honestly believe that Jinder should win the uh, the U.S. Championship match after this. He should win the title after this match. I was like, all right, cool. I'm all in on Jinder. Jinder with the title. I, I think it was going to be great. I, I I really enjoyed this this opening segment. You you had uh, Xavier Woods and, and the rest of New Day come out and they start throwing pancakes around and poking fun at Jinder. Jinder comes out and basically he swats a fly. He swatted a fly for what fifteen minutes, and I thought it was great. I, I thought it was exceptional. I just thought it was too methodical. I felt like, you know, with Ginger Mahal, he's had better matchups where you got to pick up the pace a little bit. I thought that Ginger Mahal could have done a lot better job. And they, they obviously had him move along. And then you go on to see um, Mojo Raleigh. And you thought maybe that Mojo would get ahead here and then have Ginger defeat him to get the title. But at the same time, do you take the fact that Bobby Roode defeated him as a slap in the face to Mojo or his right spot maybe just to keep having him work his character and work his promos because he's doing some great work away from the ring, Mojo Raleigh, that is, in terms of hyping up matches on his cell phone, getting people interested. You like the way the character is, it just didn't, it didn't translate to the success in the ring. Yeah, I, th- there's a disconnect there, and I'm not sure what it is. I'm not invested in Mojo Raleigh at all. Mm-hmm. It, it just it, I'm not there. Um, at no point during this match, and Mojo is just laying the wood to Bobby Roode, do I ever think that Mojo's winning this? At no point. I, like, I can't suspend disbelief because they haven't done a good enough job of building him up in the ring, and his in-ring work hasn't sold me enough to where I'm like, yeah, he's a legit threat, and he should be, uh, he should be in contention for the U.S. championship. At no point do I believe this. So him beating up Bobby Roode, I'm just like, all right, well, Bobby's going to end up hitting... Uh, some move at some point, and he's going to end up winning this, and we're just going to move on from there. And that's basically what happened. Bobby Roode ends up hitting his uh, his uh, glorious DDT and gets the win, which then sets up for those two guys to have a match that's supposed to take place next week, but it gets escalated and moved on to later on in that evening. And this was basically the the the, the story throughout the night then. The entire SmackDown program was you had you, you had your opening match with Jinder versus Xavier that was followed quickly by uh, Mojo Rowley and Bobby Roode, and then that all gets pushed to the very end of the show, and that's your main event. And in the and again in the middle, it's just kind of some filler. Yeah, but I did like the way they showcased Liv Morgan, similar to what they did with Sonya Deville. I feel like the women's group and uh, the Riot Squad is doing their thing, and they're starting to grow on me a little bit, that when they get on camera, you want to see what they're doing, and so far, so good. I feel like their victory on SmackDown was entertaining, and it didn't get me to change the channel, and uh, I felt like the filler was okay. Like you said, sometimes you got to have a little bit of filler because you got to kind of pace the show out. Right. You can't have high spot, high spot, high spot, high spot. You drain the crowd, and you, and you have people sleeping by 9.05. No, you're you, absolutely right. you got to have filler, and you just got to do in an entertaining way but the part that I hated the most okay we'll talk about um, what your thoughts were regarding Bobby Roode winning and having that match on Smackdown instead of the Royal Rumble but the part I hated the most was again you got AJ Styles and this time you feature him in a backstage interview and he's getting interviewed and you're looking at the delivery of what he's saying and you're like if I'm AJ Styles I might have taken an L on this one and I might have said look guys I'm sorry, this shrivel, this garbage you're feeding me, I I can't do nothing with it. I don't even think Stone Cold, The Rock, the best talk, I don't even think Chris Jericho could have took this shit. I would have looked at it and gone, look, this is what I've been given to tell you. I would have actually took it and made it a bit itself. That shit that he was trying to deliver yeah. was so bad. It was not good. It was, it was worse than the week before. I, I thought that it would get better. And so I don't understand how they're not tailoring their stuff to give to AJ because he's trying. You could tell the man's trying to deliver that nonsense that he's trying to talk about in terms of insulting Kevin Owens and uh, Sami Zayn, but the delivery was forced. It wasn't natural, and I don't like to be critical of AJ Styles, but at some point, if they, I don't know if they're testing him by giving him nonsense and seeing if he, he'll change it on his own as a champion, but it seems like... There's a huge disconnect between the writers, the producers, and AJ Styles, and it's not furthering the cause. It's making me angry, and I don't like it, and I don't want to see the guy that's the best in-ring performer maybe of the last decade being utilized to talk this way. So AJ's got to look at it, and he's got to take the heat because it came off as real bad and something that was the low light of SmackDown this week. And I don't like to say that with AJ Styles. I hate saying that. It was a low light. Let me ask you this. If... It was the worst moment of SmackDown. It, it, it was. It wasn't very good. If he was to do what you say, right, where he takes his script and he holds it up to the camera and he's like, 
look, this is what they want me to say to you. Yeah. Would you would you buy this? Like like he actually almost does uh to take a to take Blow a, the to, lines a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. To take a character and kind of step outside the box and yeah. almost point to it. Do you think he would then be in trouble with the guys in the back? Would he would Vince would Vince allow that? Because again, it all falls at the feet of Vince. Would Vince allow that? Because I think he would be in so much hot water. It would get over so well with the crowd, right? And he would be so over with everybody. But I think he'd be in so much hot water. But at this point in time, dude, AJ Styles is forty years old. He's the best performer. He's built up some. He's built up now two years of great matches. Everybody that steps in the ring with him has done outstanding. And so at this point in time, you got to take the heat with the boss. I mean, sometimes I think maybe they're doing this on purpose to see if he'll test the waters a little bit as a champion because the scripts are so bad. It's like, how it do you deliver bad. it this way? It so, so AJ's got to step out and uh, or either reshape it or deliver it better with more meaning or force or just roll with it. And uh, go. if it's going to be epically bad, then just let it, let it roll. But it can't be like this. It can't be like this going forward. You're making it so that we don't want to see a promo from AJ Styles, and yeah, I hated it. It's not good. So it seems like you weren't fond of uh, Bobby Roode, the glorious one, getting a run and getting the U.S. title. I thought it was perfect. I'm not I'm not mad about it, right? Because you The crowd your, loved it. The crowd yeah. absolutely ate it up. You then they were cheering. With, with Ginger and Bobby, and, and, and Bobby ends up winning, and I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. I just feel like – I felt like Ginger would have been the natural – selection here to to get the u.s championship and i think he could carry that belt and he could carry it with some prestige and i'm, I'm surprised that you're so head over heels for for bobby Roode at this point perfect way to elevate him um many people still will say you got to make him a heel but i felt like in terms of the progression of a guy that you brought over from nxt this is a world-class wrestler this is bobby Roode. a good title for him to elevate is the u.s title i thought it was perfect because ginger's coming down now and so you have Bobby Roode who's on his way up and needs a title run, and I feel like it's it's absolutely perfect. It's I, a perfect I, intersection. You could have, if you want to nitpick, put it on the Royal Rumble, but I don't think that Jinder Mahal at this point in time is putting on the best matchup. Let's stick him in the Rumble let him do his thing. See, I think there was a couple missteps here, mm-hmm. and uh, though I think this this title belt, the, the, this title should have changed hands on the Royal Rumble. All right, I think if you wanted to 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 expedite it and you wanted to have it. Uh, on SmackDown this evening, you could have done that, and that's fine. But I think you put it on Jinder, all right? You then come back the following week, and you have Bobby basically lay down a challenge to Jinder, saying, look, you had your boys come in, they they jumped me, and they, they suckered me. You didn't get me at 100%. I challenge you to a match at the Royal Rumble. And you set this up for the Royal Rumble. And at that point, you now have... Jinder as your champion for what whatever uh, a day uh, a week however it works out two weeks and then he comes in and he and he gets challenged by Bobby Roode and you make Bobby Roode fight to win that belt you don't just give it to him in, in this tournament and mind you this is a tournament where he was really beat up he was selling that he was really injured by uh, by Mojo and he was really injured by the Singh bo- uh, brothers and then you're, he was. Taken to task by Jinder. So you mean to tell me that Jinder isn't good enough? The guy who is just your world champion isn't good enough to get by a Bobby Roode who has just suffered a ton of injury and, and, and a ton of, of blows in, in the previous matches? It just doesn't... Again, it's wrestling, so you have to suspend disbelief, but you don't do a good enough job telling a story and forcing Bobby Roode to, to battle for his championship. It almost feels like it's just given to him. This is the problem that you had with Jinder Mahal becoming a U.S. champion or becoming the world champion. He was just given the belt. And you're like, what the hell? What is this? If Jinder's got to fight for it a little bit, you get behind him. You get behind that struggle, and you want that guy to be your your champion. You want to buy in because you're like, yeah, I've seen this guy have to sit there and fight for it. At this point, I just feel like, Bobby Roode's like, all right, cool. I I got by this guy. I got by that guy, and hey, I made it to this championship little thing. And all right, cool. Let's move on. All right, it which just, show? It just, it, it, there, there's a disconnect for me there. Which show did you tolerate the most? Because it sounds like you weren't thrilled exactly with both. But I I wasn't. Which show did you uh not uh, hate the most? Um, I, look, they both had issues mm-hmm. to say the least. Going into this conversation, uh, this happens most weeks. Going into it, and I think it's just because the two hour window that SmackDown presents itself in is usually so much more concise and there's less garbage. But I think Raw wins this week for me. Exactly. I felt like what Braun Strowman was able to do, elevating a female superstar, whenever you have Seth Rollins and Finn Balor do some damage and what they were able to do in the ring, it 
it exceeded what SmackDown was able to do. I like both shows, but I felt like Raw was much better. So they extend their lead. Yeah. Raw's doing a good job right now. And uh, I still keep having visions, though. Uh, as much as I love wrestling, I'm, I keep dreaming of, if uh, some rumors are true, I just keep dreaming of AJ Styles showing up on Raw. It just would be awesome. I feel like it'd be great to just kind of introduce maybe a little bit of a, of a feud, but to have the Balor Club and just have AJ Styles show up on both shows. But uh, it ain't happening. Uh, AJ, it just feels like... AJ's the the shining star on the B show right now. And he is he is the big fish in a small pond. You got it. And that's what it is. All right, hit me with the news and notes, sir. What's going on? I think a lot of it's going to be of a negative variety. <laughs> All right, well, WWE has the possibility to be teaming up with Fox. Oh. Now, this speculation is based upon UFC leaving Fox, and if this happens, Fox has a lot of outlets and a lot of channels, and they have a lot of content that they need to fill. All that being said, WWE comes with a ton of content and a ton of ways to fill it. Now, this probably won't happen until I believe uh, their contract with NBC Universal expires in, I want to say, 2019. They're hoping to have their deal done by May of 2018, though. So in a couple of months, they want to have their deal done. So if this happens, WWE would then have Raw on your local Fox affiliate. Here in the Detroit area, it would be uh, Fox 2. So Raw would now become a two-hour program, which would be awesome, yes. I think, for everybody. Because you see how good the uh, two-hour show is, two-hour television show. SmackDown is usually very good. Raw just tends to have the better talent, and they tend to have more. There's always that dead period right around uh, the, the second and the third hour. Now it would just be just banging on, on all cylinders for, for two hours. It would be great. Uh, SmackDown would then air on uh, your Fox Sports 1 affiliate. And then you would have some other content for Fox Sports 2. And this is what I was talking about with your, uh, with your all women's idea yep. or your, your, your 205 Live idea. You get, you actually can now put them on some other cable networks because again, Fox has a ton of content that they've got to fill and they've got a ton of outlets, whether it be your, your local, uh, Fox affiliate, whether it be FS1, FS2, or here in, in Detroit, you've got Fox Sports Detroit. That's still an affiliate of Fox. So they've got a ton, a, a ton of, of uh, content that needs to be filled. Um, WrestleMania rumors. There are some rumored matches. Triple H versus Braun. Mm. So this kind of ties in and, and segues into what happened this week on Raw with Stephanie reinstating him because she wants Triple H to maybe throw him out at, uh, at the Royal Rumble to then set up a WrestleMania match. Now this all goes back a, a couple months to, uh, uh, what was it, Survivor Series. So it, there is that. There's an underlying story building there. Uh, of course, Brock versus Roman Reigns. AJ versus Finn Balor. Now, speculation and rumor are Finn wins the Royal Rumble. He then goes over to SmackDown to challenge mm. AJ for his title. Yeah, someone called that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, also, John Cena will challenge The Undertaker. Yeah. I, do you like that? No. Yeah, I think it might be no. the slowest match. Headlocks and yeah. suplexes and Look, body slams. Undertaker's <laughs> going away last year yeah. was perfect, right? He didn't look like he'd belonged in the ring. He was slow. It was it was Roman Reigns got the most that he could get out of the Undertaker in that match. You now put him in the ring with an aged John Cena who is already a, a C to B level talent in the ring. John Cena's best thing he's got going for him is he is a great beacon for WWE because he can go out and he can sell the brand, he can sell himself, and he's an awesome promo. This His is in ring work is not very good. This just screams of opportunities to have them stand in the ring, do promos where the build up will be more of the thing to look at instead of the match. That's what it is because I would like to see John Cena and Undertaker stare each other down, kind of go back and forth about yeah, each other's three legends. years ago. <laughs> not now. No, no. Uh, no, not now, not at all. It's one of those dream matchups I think the majority of fans when, would like what, to see. What was the last good John Cena match you had? It was him versus AJ Styles, right? A year ago, a yeah. And who got that out of him? AJ Styles got that out of John Cena. Yeah. You know, you fast forward and look at the matches that John Cena has been putting but on regularly. You They're ran, not very good. You ranted and raved about how good his promos were on The Miz leading up to WrestleMania. Yeah. He can do that again. The guy's again. a great promo. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying the build-up will be probably better but than the, the match. the match will be garbage. The match will be garbage. There'll be no point for that it. That could be the filler of WrestleMania. It's four hours long. I guess. But Undertaker is not filler and is not filler on WrestleMania. That's the problem. Mm. Um, there is... Uh, you didn't see Kevin Owens this week on SmackDown. Uh, he is dealing with an injury. He was pulled off of the, the, the house shows and the house show circuit. 
So he's working through an injury, so they pulled him off uh, to sit there and kind of deal with that. Uh, Y2J is supposed to be at the next uh, next week's Raw for the 25th Great anniversary. Great announcement. That's awesome. Yep. There's no contract done, but it is it is Show expected up. that he'll be there no matter what. Um, Goldberg, as announced on WWE, will be your headliner for the Hall of Fame inductions this year. Well deserved. Which, again, connects some dots, leads to the speculation that Undertaker will be wrestling at this year's WrestleMania. Uh, Jay Uso was picked up for a DWI this oh. past Saturday night, Sunday morning, after leaving a live event in Texas, so that's not good. Uh, Ronda Rousey has signed with the WWE, so mm-hmm. there is still a shot that she'll be at the Royal Rumble. This on the heels of TMZ breaking some news that Triple H was having dinner with Rousey, and uh, Rousey had come out after, and TMZ started firing some questions at her, and at no point did she ever deny that she did not sign a contract. And uh, WWE has come out now and basically confirmed it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good luck. Uh, Roman Reigns. Uh, talking about not a good week Uh-oh, for those. Oh, uh, that's those another cousins. problem. Yeah. Roman Reigns was named in a federal investigation surrounding a steroid distribution ring based out of Miami. If you remember back in 2016, he was suspended for a wellness violation. So this is going to be fun to see how this uh, works out because the dude who was running the gym and who was doing the uh, the, the, the sales for that steroid ring uh, totally rolled over on Roman Reigns. Uh, TNA, they just finished up some TV tapings, and there's a lot of talent on the move and may possibly be brought to WWE in time for the Royal Rumble. Guys like EC3, they were released early. Bobby Lashley's contract has expired, and the former Chris Masters is now a free agent. So those guys can all come to WWE in time for the Royal Rumble, if so interested. I would love to see Ethan Carter III in WWE, and if they promote him right. He has filed for some trademark rights for his EC3 character, so he can bring that with him. WWE can let him use that character, and if they allow him the spotlight to to maybe go to a brand like SmackDown, I think he could do a lot for that brand. You talk about AJ Styles being the 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 big fish in a small pond. You you put another big fish in that pond, EC3 could be that fish. What would be a good first feud for EC3 if he is in the WWE? Is it Bobby Roode? Uh, it could be Bobby Roode, or it could even be AJ Styles. If he comes in and, and they tell his backstory right, because you got to realize the way he looks, he has the physique of John Cena, right? He is built like he is carved out of marble, and the guy cuts a promo like John Cena. He is does wonders with a microphone. Wicked sharp, yep. So he's he's already got two out of the three. His in-ring work is very, very good, better than John Cena. So you put him with AJ Styles, I think they could tear the house down. You do a, a set of three or four or five matches, and you have it all culminate at a huge event, oh, I could see that working for sure. All right, spoiler alert. If you're not into spoilers, take a second here, take a beat, and, and fast forward through this, but there's some breaking news at TNA. Yeah, TNA. Austin Aries has resurfaced in TNA, and like you said, spoiler alert, so tune out for the next couple seconds. Uh, he is the new TNA champion after oh. beating Eli Drake. Oh, uh-huh. so getting a push there. Okay. Yeah. So Austin Aries think he'll be okay there? in TNA. What's going on with TNA? Is, is it just kind of like meddling along, just getting through? It, so there are a lot of things going on. Don Callis uh, and, and Scott Demore have taken over the creative there, and they're really trying to rework things. They've gone back to a uh, four-sided ring. They've got rid of the uh, the six-sided ring. Uh, it, it's just – it's a company that is – I think they see where they want to be, and now they're making some corrections, and there's going to be a little bit of a curve with them, and I think they're doing their best deal to, to be, maybe – you you see all the success that guys in ROH have, right? And I think they're trying to be that in between between an ROH and a WWE. They realize that they're not WWE and they're not necessarily going to compete on a WWE level. I think they see themselves as being better than Ring of Honor. So they're going to put a little bit more in with their production and they're going to start to tell better stories and just hope that the fan comes back around. Because at one time, TNA was really, really good. TNA was really, really good. And there was a lot of dark years. And I think they're trying to come back from those dark years. You buying Austin Aries as a champ? Can he carry it? Yeah, he can. Austin Aries in real life is just a dick, though. Mm. Like, he is a jerk. Like, he's not He's not a good guy. You know, he's very, he's very confident and very cocky about himself. 
Uh, I think he's a very good in-ring performer, and he cuts a great promo. So he could be a good champion. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what this edition of Austin Aries and TNA is like. If it's like the old Austin Aries and the old TNA, it's not going to work. If it's going to be the Austin Aries that was in WWE, it probably won't work. There's got to be some type of middle ground there. Very solid podcast recording, sir. Great wrap-up. Can't wait for next week as we get closer and closer to the Royal Rumble to see how this shakes out. And everybody loves when it's time to talk about the Royal Rumble because who's going to show up? The surprises, new matchups, the women's exclusive Royal Rumble. So it's uh, all leading up to this big kickoff now to 2018. The road to WrestleMania is about to kick off, so it's going to be some fun times. Yeah, Raw, the 25th anniversary edition is this Monday, so it should be a great Raw. Can't wait it, to recap that. Yeah, Dude, it's going to be jam-packed. There's so many people that are going to be at this event. It is going to be incredible. I don't know how they're going to be able to fit everybody into it. I mean, I guess the actual spectacle itself is like a, it's going to be like a five hour raw. You, we only get three hours of it on television, but in real life, it's like five hours long. That is crazy. All right. If you enjoy this podcast, definitely check out us every single Friday. You can follow Adam at Adam R S T R O Z. Follow the network at Detroit Podcast. Feel free, message us anytime during Raw, SmackDown, anything you hear regarding the world of wrestling. Adam and I love to banter back and forth. The most interactive sports Twitter page, the most interactive WWE page in the Metro Detroit area. Also, support those who support us. Check out the Breaking Down the Ring podcast. They go on live each and every Wednesday, 9 o'clock or so on the Podcast Detroit Network. Check them out. Follow them on Twitter at BDRCast. Great guys as well. They live tweet during Raw and SmackDown as well. Very entertaining stuff over there at the Breaking Down the Ring podcast. And if you like sports, you like Detroit sports, check John and I out. We do a show that drops every single Thursday on this very network, the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Uh, Check us out, the Doc and Jock Show. See everybody next time.